Insightful Podcasts by Informative Hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 57, Coping with COVID-19. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my healthy and vibrant co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hello, love. Hello, dear. How are you today? Um, okay. So far, as far as we know. <laughs> so as much as we tried to avoid the coronavirus coverage last week, uh, I, I think this week <laughs> you can't we can't get away, get from, away it. from it. It's it's all over the, the place. You know, it, I don't think there is a area of entertainment that it hasn't touched, an area of sports you know it, it's basically you know business yeah school even even know. schools yeah the local schools are, are now closing down right we still haven't as of right now we haven't heard anything about our specific district but one of the districts nearby they're at this point not just a, a two-week or a three-week closing it's almost a four-week closing yeah yeah. Um, so that's, that's kind of big, uh, you know, nearby in the Philadelphia region, they closed for, yes, they did. for three weeks. So it's, it's coming. It's scary know. stuff. Yeah, it's sure scary is. stuff. So we will try to bring you a, uh, entertainment perspective on it because it has seeped into all facets of mm -hmm. entertainment here yeah. from theme parks to movies, to shows, to uh, Broadway mm -hmm. to conventions. conventions. I mean, it's, it's having a, a wide impact. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So with that, in our Disney detective, we will talk about theme parks closing at Disney. Um, we will talk about, uh, Disney's, uh, attempts or, or efforts to help, uh, cope with it. Um, and we'll also talk about, they're actually releasing frozen a little early for the folks that are, We'll stuck at home. <laughs> stuck at home. Uh, Star Wars. Uh, thankfully, the our Star Wars insights this week has nothing to do with coronavirus. Uh, that, right. I think that's the one, the uh, one segment story. we have yeah. that doesn't have anything to do yeah. with it. Then in our entertainment news, we'll talk about some news from Orlando Bloom and how it's affecting the filming of Carnival Row. Uh, and uh, as well as Supernatural. And then uh, we'll get into our insightful picks. Uh, ready to go? Sure. All right, let's do it. Go oh, for Disney Detective. So you know the world is coming to an end when Disney decides that they're not only going to be closing Disneyland, but that they decide that they're closing Disney World and not just for a couple of days, but for a couple of weeks. Right. Um, so that was really like the big news that, that popped up. I guess it was Thursday, Thursday night. Um, Disneyland, it was announced that they were going to be closing this weekend. Um, the resorts were actually still going to be opened. And Disney Springs in California were still going to be open. And then later that night, they announced that Disney World, Walt Disney World, basically was going to be following suit. I believe Disney Springs is still going to be open, um, but the, the parks themselves are going to be shut down basically for the rest of the month. They're yeah. not supposed to be opening up until April 1st. Um, so one of the, the stories that came out uh, from California is that Disneyland is actually going to be donating the excess food to local food banks during the closure. Um, so um, Disneyland actually... Um, <coughs> 
<coughs> excuse me, uh, in a blog post, the external communications manager of Disneyland Resort announced that all excess food from Disneyland Park and Disney California Adventure Park will be donated to Second Harvest Food Bank of Orange County. Um, this way, they're you know reducing the the food waste and it going to to people you know desperately in need because you know I'm sure a lot of people are going to be out of work and yeah. and you know not have the the support you know uh, to the money to to support their family. So the company pa- plans to donate excess dairy, fruit, vegetables, packaged goods, uh, banquet meals. Uh, to the food bank, which is working to end hunger in Orange County. Uh, Johnson said, who is the uh, the communications manager, said that Disneyland Resort has implemented a food donation program since 2014 to actually support the local community. Uh, the result uh, also has a food scraps division program to reduce the food waste, which is a massive contributor, contributor to hurting the environment. Um, Disneyland Resort has actually donated over 20,000 meals to Second Harvest, um, uh, the food bank, uh, in 2019. Um, Disney obviously announced Thursday that the closure of its park in Florida, California, Paris, um, because of the operations and that they were even suspending operations of the cruise lines, even though no cruise line had had anybody no, no disney cruise no line. disney cruise line yeah. had had anybody affected they decided to remain closed um you know throughout the rest of the month uh they say that they'll be monitoring the ongoing situation and follow the advice and guidance of federal and state officials and health agencies and disney obviously will continue to pay cast members at this time so that's yeah. that's a big thing well that's good i mean, I mean they're they're being good corporate citizens mm-hmm. at this point in time yeah. I, mean, I mean you in Florida, they are the single largest employer in the Absolutely. state. Absolutely. Uh, so if you're if you're engaging in a shutdown mm-hmm. on a scale like that, it would have monumental impacts to the overall environment. Absolutely. The, the employment environment. Absolutely. Um, and it's you know, and and it's a shame that you know this is happening in this time of year. Um, you know, I have. Two two co-workers, two friends at work who are both supposed to be going down in the beginning of April. Now, at this point in time, the parks will be reopening, you know, by then, as far as we know. Um, the one friend has now canceled that trip mm-hmm. just because she doesn't want to take the risk and, you know, because of flying and everything. Sure, yeah. Whereas the other friend, he's still not sure. He's kind of thinking, well, if we go after everything... Hopefully, you know, everything's clean. There shouldn't be, you know, as much of a risk. So, but I yeah. think he's still on the fence, you know, too. And it's, you know, it, it's kind of, you know, what do you do? Do you live in a bubble or, Well, and you the know? thing is, it's like, you know, Disney is usually extremely good with their hygiene mm-hmm. of their parks. and Just their in general. And stuff. Yeah. So I would be less concerned really about. The park itself, it and would more be concerned the guests. about the guests. It's the and other how guests. you're getting there. Are you right. flying? Right. I mean, it's everyone kind of knows that an airplane's a petri dish to begin with. Right. Exactly. And and that's the other thing too is I think a lot of people are changing if they can. You know, if they're not far enough away. You know, it's one thing if you're going to drive from California to Florida, right? Th- then you're extending your vacation by a lot well, longer. Well, I mean, you even think if you're you driving. Know. So, for instance, right. we, we tend to drive when we right. go down from, right. from New Jersey down. Even doing that, you're still exposing yourself to infection mm-hmm. at restaurants, right. rest, at stops, rest stops, gas stations, you know, hotels not, on the way down. Right, exactly. So it's you kind of have to measure it out. Okay, if I'm on a plane... It's this many people. If I'm driving, it's this many rest stops and, you know, this many people that I could be encountering. Yeah, I mean, it's you, you, kind could, of a, you could pick it up in Florida, drive home, right. and then spread it through eight right. different states on the way home. Yeah, it's, 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 a tough, it's a tough call. And I don't, you know, and we had kind of, after we had gone during Christmas, we were like, all right, let's go for spring break. Right. So we were almost booking a trip for yeah. spring break be- and if we had booked a trip 
I don't know if we would still be going. Right. I, you know, I think we would kind of have a, a hard time. Well, I mean, you know, with it too. It's about being responsible yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we we didn't let our daughter go to a sleepover. Or we're mm-hmm. not letting her go to a sleepover tonight. Right. Just in, as an overabundance of caution. Right. You know, you went and picked up groceries. You interacted mm-hmm. with one person there ra- rather than going to grocery shop yourself. Right. Um, so it, the chances of you picking it up in that environment are probably slim. But right. But given the fatality rate and the infection rate, right. why even take that chance? True. True. Yeah. So. And, you know, hopefully in a couple of months, it's all behind us and we can, you know, all of these things will still be there. Right. It's not like it was a once in a lifetime Absolutely. thing. So that's the way you have to kind so of So while we are all being responsible citizens and shuttering ourselves inside, <laughs> Disney's trying to help us out. Tell us about that. So story. this was was kind of uh, nice news that like a, an early coronavirus Christmas present, I guess. So the Walt Disney Company announced that Frozen 2 will be available three months ahead of schedule on Disney Plus in the U.S. beginning Sunday, March 15th, surprising families with some fun and joy during this challenging period. Um, So from our new Bob, our new friend Bob, as opposed to our old friend Bob, he said, Frozen 2 has captivated audience around the world through its powerful themes of perseverance and the importance of family, messages that are incredibly relevant during this time, and we are pleased to be able to share this heartwarming story early with our Disney Plus subscribers to enjoy at home on any device. Um so internationally, Frozen 2 will actually be available in Canada, the Netherlands, Australia, New Zealand on Tuesday. And in the U.S., the film was initially supposed to come out, obviously, you know, three months from now, and it'll be available, you know, on, on Sunday. So, Well, and this is kind of one of those, it's a no-brainer, right? Yeah. So they're not charging for it. It's part of your subscription. It, yeah. So they're not losing any money right. by bringing it out. If early. anything, it's not in theaters anymore. Right. If anything, you know, and and the thing is, it's gonna it was gonna be coming out on DVD. So okay, so if you couldn't get out to the store to get it, or you right. didn't order it online to have it delivered, here it's part of your package. Here's a little present to yeah. to have so, a little family. You know what? Kudos to Disney mm-hmm. and its new new leadership for. For these two decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, there were a couple of different stories that I I saw um, talking about, you know, the various movies that are supposed to premiere, you know, that were supposed to premiere in the next couple of months. Mulan being one of them. Right. Now that one's kind of been been pushed. It's been delayed. Um, And there were people that were kind of posting going, why don't you just release that to Disney Plus? And, you know... Because there's a theatrical release. Well, They're yeah, going to lose and a fortune obviously they'd lose money on it, but it, it was kind of like, well, since everybody's going to be stuck home, why don't you, you know, <laughs> release all this Why don't they stuff? have a pay-per-view version well, of it? Well, and I could totally see them doing that, you know, charge, you know, 15 bucks or something, right. you know, so that they'd, you know, and I'm sure you'd get, you know, a bunch of people that, you know, would, yeah, you, you know, you would see it that. that so it'll... It, it, you know, so it'll be interesting to see what what happens with that. And then talking, you know, with Mulan, if everything happens, our daughter was actually supposed to be doing a class trip right. to see. It's actually it was a school trip because seventh and eighth graders were going to be going to it, and they were actually going to be going to the the movies to see it. Now have no idea if this is even going to happen, but if it does happen and she is able to go, we have asked her to be a guest on our show to give a review Movie of review, it. Yeah. So not sure if it's going to happen, but <laughs> well, I mean, she'll see it eventually know, she, and can do the review. Right. But. So we, we kind of thought that that would be a nice little tie in to, to bring her in on our show since I've guessed uh, been a guest on on her podcast with you, so sure. kind of like a little tie-in, family tie-in. So, all right. So that was it for our Disney news. All right, we will come back with our Star Wars insights. So I really do need to come up with a Star Wars like 
sound or transition theme. sound. But I'm, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm under constant threat by <laughs> these guys for copyright. So I, I we can't. could always do our own pew 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 yeah, pew pew pew, yeah. pew pew pew. So um, Star Wars: Rise of Skywalker clip showcases Warwick Davis. Tell us about this. So story. this was a a, a nice little uh, story that that popped up. It was on um, Sci Fi actually. Um, so Star Wars: Rise of Skywalker obviously changed plenty about the Star Wars canon. Introduced new relationships, highlighted new powers, and basically brought the epic story kind of to a close. Sort of. Um, and there were tons of cameos within um, within the movie. So, you know, you had Lando and, and everything. But what was kind of cute was that the Ewoks made a return to it. And obviously one of the most memorable being Wicket. Um, so now fans can see a behind the scene glimpse of how the alien teddy bear made his return. Um, obviously Wicket was played by Warwick Davis. Um, and so he returned to play Wicket again. And now Wicket is older and has a son and his own son in real life played his son in uh, his Ewok son. Nice. So that was kind of, uh, of you know, cute to say. Uh, so Warwick Davis was quoted as saying, he got older, like I have, meaning his character, uh, and he has a son, has a child. Uh, the Ewoks you see next to him, the Ewok you see next to him is, is his son, which is played by my son, which was really just a lovely touch. Um, and it was really keen for us to play the characters together, which was lovely. So in this cute little clip, you know, you basically got to see, um, you know, J.J. Abrams is, is talking to, you know, to Warwick about it and saying, you know, how, how wonderful it is to, to have him here and, you know, and basically to pass on this tradition, you know, to his son. And it was right. just like a cute little, you know, thing, because I didn't even realize, you know, we kind of figured when we saw the Ewok in, in the scene that it was more than likely right. Warwick Davis, not knowing that, you know, it was his son as well. So that yeah. was kind of like, you know. Well, it's nice that they kept the, the tradition going. I think yeah. that's Yeah, that's so that was a, a cute little, you know, backstory. Um, the release date, uh, the digital release uh, was actually supposed to be Tuesday, uh, this coming Tuesday, but it actually dropped on Friday um, on Amazon, Apple TV, Google Play, um, and then it'll be out on Blu-ray March 31st. So When's it on Disney Plus? You know what? They were kind of saying, well, shouldn't it be coming out now if you got Frozen coming out? Exactly. Yeah, so they haven't released the uh, the uh, the Disney Plus date, but I'm guessing it's, it's probably going to be probably a little bit sooner. Maybe that'll be like next month's Not that I'm itching Easter to see it again, <laughs> to be honest with you, but it'd be nice if they dropped it on Disney Plus. Oh, I'm sure they will. So You know they will. Well, I know they will, just a matter of when. Right, right. So that's it for our Star Wars yeah, Insights. Yeah, just a cute little Star Wars story to lighten right. the mood. And we'll be back with entertainment news. Okay. Yeah, you know, I guess. We could have made woo, woo, woo. Yeah, yeah made some whatever. Noise. It's all right. It's, it's blooper okay. real. <laughs> there you go. Tell us about Orlando Bloom. Oh, uh, so poor Orlando Bloom, and, you know, he's obviously not the only one out there. Um, but Orlando Bloom and the rest of the cast of uh, Carnival Row have been sent home uh, from the set over fears of the coronavirus. The dad-to-be, whose fiance is Katy Perry, recently announced who recently announced her pregnancy, uh, is now going to be quarantined along with the rest of uh, the cast. So the Amazon TV show is actually, uh, they film it in Prague, and the production had been shut down to allow the cast and crew time to travel back home before uh, the ban, you know, the travel ban right. goes into effect. Um, so Orlando, President Trump. Yeah, exactly. So Orlando had pulled a sad face uh, into a video on, you know, that he posted to inter Instagram basically saying, it's farewell from all of us as we go home to be quarantined. Um, 
And, you know, good luck to everybody. Stay safe out there, there you know, and, and be self-quarantined. Uh, it seems really crazy that this whole corona thing, but you have to do the right thing by you and your family and stay safe. And in a few weeks, we'll be able to beat this bad boy. Um, so obviously, we have the travel ban, you know, with the U.S. and Europe. And now they're adding the U.K. and Ireland, you know, so it, it you know, so hopefully everybody, you know, that's that's abroad, you know, can, can get back. Um, and obviously other news that had come out, you know, during the week was that Tom Hanks and Rita w- Wilson, Wilson. <laughs> both were diagnosed with the virus, um, that they're working, uh, in Australia on a movie and it was announced that they had both, um, tested positive and were doing the, the quarantine thing. Um, and Tom posted, uh, Tom had posted on Instagram as well saying, hello folks, Rita and I are down here in Australia. We felt a bit tired, like we had colds and some body aches. Rita had some chills that came and went slight fevers too. And to play it safe, you know, and to do the right thing, uh, as we needed, we were tested and we were found to be positive. So what do you do next? Well, you know, protocols that must be followed. So we Hanks's, uh, we were tested, observed and isolated for as long as the public health and safety requires. Not much more can be done than that. It's just one day at a time. We'll keep the world posted and updated. Take care of yourself. Um, you know, the, you know, the funny thing is that their one Instagram post there help to uh alleviate more fear mm-hmm. and make the public feel more at ease and and more calm about mm-hmm. this whole thing than three press conferences and a flutter of twitters oh, from the president absolutely and and bumbled during this and whole there thing. have actually been a couple of videos of people that were on like the cruise ships or or things you know where they posted and they're like hey listen you know Fortunately, you know, I didn't have any underlining, you know, illnesses or anything. So for me, it was really just like a bad cold. You know, I was achy. I had the fever. I had the cough. And that was really it. It's not, you know, because unfortunately for, you know, older people or if you do have underlining health concerns, it can be fatal, you know, but here it's like, you know what, it. Well, I just think it's, it's, it's funny like it's seeing a, someone who's, right. you know, well respected, mm-hmm. which is, I think, the first achievement that Tom mm-hmm. Hanks has over Donald yeah. Trump, and a, a good public speaker mm-hmm. can come out and not provide any policy information whatsoever, just right. personal experience, yeah. and make you feel at ease. Mm-hmm. Where Donald Trump and his entire administration, every time they get in front of the mm-hmm. microphone. You know the t- stock market tanks, mm-hmm. the public's out, out outrage. Everyone's yep. confused. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows what's going on. Right. All your health officials are scratching their head, trying to figure out what the hell he's mm-hmm. talking about. Yep. It's almost like just just hire Tom Hanks as your spokesperson <laughs> exactly. at this point. Or can Tom, we just vote Tom I was Hanks say, in? Hey, write in Tom Hanks for twenty twenty. Tom <laughs> Hanks is for president. I would totally vote for that. So, okay, anyway. So, you know, then, of course, you have, you know, some other shows that are in the middle of production trying to finish up production. So you have Supernatural um, and uh, The 100, with which are both on the CW. Um, they're both actually in their final seasons. This is, They're doing season, you know, finales and trying to film them. Um, now, know, are they filming in the United States? Uh, I believe so. Uh, it doesn't actually, it didn't say where. So yeah, they're, they're filming in, in the U S um, you know, so you have those two shows that are kind of, you know, things are up in the air. Um, this, uh, supernatural hasn't finished yet that, you know, they basically had to, to stop. They made the decision Friday afternoon to suspend production, um, which then could cause, you know, obviously the, the delay of, of the show, airing but the other issue is that um one of the stars um of supernatural uh he's actually supposed to be starting a new show and production supposed to start basically that his timeline was that the one show would end and within a week or so he would start the next one now it's gonna throw you know the production cycle off it could 
you know, potentially throw off, you know, ever, everything else. Um, and then with the 100, they just have a couple more shows to, to do. So for that one, excuse me, they haven't completely stopped it yet. They're still kind of going because they want to try and, and get that finished within their timeline. But obviously, you know, as, as we said, it's affecting, you know, everything. So production from things that are already completed, yeah. just being, you know, well, it's also worth stuff, mentioning so. that, that, as we said earlier, that Broadway is shut down. Yes. Broadway made Most the announcement. Most of your major sporting leagues, right. uh, NBA has, has suspended, NHL has suspended, mm-hmm. uh, major league baseball has, uh, Cancel the rest of spring training and right. pushed up start their opening day. Right, I was going to say opening day has uh, been pushed up. XFL. Out. I think it's pretty bad when the XFL cancels, okay? <laughs> so, so bad. XFL anyway. canceled. Right, right. Um, <clears throat> March Madness. March got Madness canceled. has been canceled. So, and, you know, it's from a consumer of entertainment, this, this is all, you know, bad news, kind mm-hmm. of unfortunate news. But you have to kind of look at it from a, a long-term economic standpoint mm-hmm. as well at the people that this is really going to affect. You know, it's not going to affect the athletes. They're still going right. to get paid. And but uh, you're uh, you're you're going to see an effect on all your vendors, mm-hmm, your right. local businesses. Mm-hmm. You know, I was at a restaurant uh, this week for lunch, and I left the restaurant and noticed they had a very large banner advertising March Madness, and I thought, boy, you know, this time of year is where a mm-hmm. lot of these places bring in so <clears throat> yeah. much of their money. What's going to happen? Mm-hmm. It's, they didn't postpone mass, uh, March Madness. Right. It's and that been canceled. Was, and that was the thing, because at first they were still, you know, in the beginning stages, they were actually still going to be playing, just nobody was going right. to be in the arenas. Right. So you were probably still going to be able to watch it. And, you know, and you figure all these businesses were still going to get people coming in to see it. Right. Now they've just canceled it and completely. like I, I can't help but think when you had statements come out from people like lebron james mm-hmm. when when they had suggested that they weren't going to have fans in the arena right and lebron james was offended right. by this like oh i'm not going to play if that's the case mm-hmm. like yeah like how idiotic and selfish could you possibly be mm-hmm. to want your fans to expose themselves to the danger of getting this infection mm-hmm. just so you can have people clapping for mm-hmm. you yeah and, and fortunately, the leagues were responsible enough mm-hmm. to curb that entire thing and just stop gameplay entirely. Right. Now, the, the ones that I feel most, you know, upset for, not the, you know, the, the, the athletes or, or whatever, it's the high school or the college level where you have seniors, right. where this is their final year or, you know, or um, even, you know, with with school productions, with plays, with musicals that all of these schools now are not, you know, putting on their shows and you have all these seniors where this was their last, you know, their final bow. Well, you figure even March Madness because a lot of these college kids Mm -hmm. use tournaments like this to showcase their skills to be able to to get into right. the professional mm-hmm. leagues yeah. and they're not going to be able to do that. Right, exactly. They're they're obviously going to have to do something else right. to be able to, you know. And, and then like the guys, the, the, the kids who are surefire draft picks are going to be fine. Right, there's no, it's, it's those. It's those, it's those later round draft mm-hmm. picks that, right. you know, this is their chance to shine and they're going to miss, out, miss right. out on that opportunity. Right, it, it's, it's really, you know, I think the kids, the high school kids, the college kids, you know, middle school kids that had some big performance or some big game or some big tournament yeah. and now... In most cases, well, it's not even going to, it's not postponed. It's just But that's the thing done. with them pushing school, with them extending your, your <laughs> spring true. break. Right. You know, these kids are going going to be going to school much later in the season. There's no reason you couldn't schedule true. something like you this could. later on if you, they want to work could. it out. Yeah, you know, and, and this, you know, for, you know, seniors that have proms, are they still going to, you know, allow schools to, to have proms or even graduation? How are, you know... And virtual problems. Everyone meets on <laughs> Skype. Right. Just have the music in the background. Everybody just kind of dances. Yep. So, you know, it'll be interesting to, you know, to, to see. And what I wanted to, to mention was there are a couple of um, athletes that have come forward and have said that they would actually pay for um, 
different people that worked in the arenas, you know, right. the, they were going to yeah, your concessions people right, and your you know, custodians. Who, and... Right. That there were there have been, you know, a handful of various different, um, you know, athletes that have come out and said, you know, I'm going to give this much well, that's good to, to help pay. You know, for people that are, are basically out of work while while everything's shut yeah. down. So I thought that that was a, a nice gesture that to, good. you know, of goodwill. Because, I mean, this is, we've already seen the effect it's had on the stock market. And this isn't even yeah. with people losing income at this point in right, time. Right, right. So this is, it, hopefully with any luck, the crisis will abate within a few weeks. Mm -hmm. But the effects of this are going to linger for quite some time. Yeah, yeah. So that was it for our entertainment news. Mm -hmm. We will come back, and you have two insightful picks I this do. week. I do. And I have none. <laughs> I was not very picky this week. I guess not. Go for your monopolized insightful picks <laughs> of the week. Well, these were actually going to be stories, and, you know, as it, it turned out, I, I didn't really have anything new as an insightful pick, so it, it seemed very timely for these two things to, to kind of pop up. Um, you know, as we mentioned, Broadway um, shut down. You know, I don't even know how long they were going to be closed for. I don't know if there was any uh, set time frame, um, but obviously, you know, along with the... Broadway, you had, you know, the Metropolitan Opera, who obviously canceled... Um, shows as well. So kind of in an effort to continue providing opera to an audience, uh, to audiences, the Met Opera will host nightly Met Opera streams on its official website. So these streams will be free and they'll also present encores of past performances from its live in HD series. Uh, the encore performances will begin at 7.30 p.m. each night on the company's official website and will be available for an additional 20 hours afterwards. Uh, each showcase will be uh, viewable on the Met Opera um, on demand apps. So I thought this was kind of cool. If it's some, you know, obviously opera isn't for everybody, but if you've ever wanted to go to the opera, here's your this chance is a to good chance to dip your toe in the water and see to, if you like it. To watch it, you know, for free. So they actually have so each night they have, you know, different performances. I'm not even gonna try and pronounce some of them. Um, but Monday is gonna be Carmen. Uh, Tuesday I think you got that one. Yeah, I got that one. Uh La Boheme. Um and then, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you know, various different ones. Uh, some that were filmed, you know, in 2010, 2008, 2015, you know. So not all of them are, are from, you know, right now. Some of them are, you know, again, past performances. But again, something different to do, you know, at night, um, you know, and to kind of keep... You and know. you don't have to break out the opera glasses. And you don't have these. to, right, because you have it on your screen and you don't have to get all dressed up. Or if you want to get all dressed up, you, you could. So I thought this was kind of a, a, a neat thing um, break out to the do. Tux, make some nachos and get comfortable <laughs> on the couch. There you go. Um, and then another uh, thing that kind of popped up. Um, well, it was interesting because I guess earlier in the week, um, I had, you know, because of course we're all getting emails. Every everybody's getting emails from everybody and every uh, clothing company, uh, food place, yep. you know, who, bank, whoever you've ever dealt with that you gave out your email to. You're getting all these emails saying, "Hey, coronavirus, we wash our hands," basically. And <laughs> um, so originally, one of the emails that I got. Uh, was for the uh, Philadelphia Museum of Art that they weren't going to be having any events, but the museum was still going to be open for you to to go to, you know, so that you could just walk around and have some place to go. Well, unfortunately, well, you just stay fifteen feet away from everyone. Right. Well, unfortunately, I guess Thursday or Friday they sent out an email saying, "Sorry, we are going to be closed for a couple of weeks." But then this story popped up saying that 12 famous museums are offering virtual tours that you can take from your couch. Um, so basically, if you go to the individual 
um, websites of the different museums, they have links to their little virtual tours where, you know, it's either the whole museum or certain aspects of the museum. So, again, don't need a passport. Don't need to get dressed or take a shower, really, if you want, you know. And, you know, here's a chance to kind of see the world, you know, from from your home. So, you know, if... You know, if you're interested in art, here's a, an interesting, you know, way to be able to see it. So you have the British Museum from London, the Guggenheim from New York, uh, the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., um, the National Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art from Seoul, uh, museums from Berlin, Amsterdam, the Van Gogh Museum from Amsterdam. So that would kind of be, just you know, just watch your ears. Just watch <laughs> Hold on to your ears. Um, the Paul Getty Museum in Los Angeles uh, from Florence. Um, you know, Brazil, Mexico City. So, you know, kind of kind of cool. You know, something different to, to do, you know, with, with the family to kind of, you know, look around. And, and something, again, if you've never, you know, been to an art museum and wanted to go and not sure if it's your thing, here's an opportunity to do it. You know, from your home on your your laptop or, or your tablet. So cool, good picks. Thanks. We will be right back with upcoming events or not <laughs> or not. <laughs> what we're missing out on that we've been <laughs> advertising for the last four weeks. Yeah, the, uh, you know, again, everything is has been very last minute. Um, we know that last week Monster Mania was talking about, no, we're still going strong. We're still, you know, be responsible. And then Thursday, they basically came out and said, yeah, we have to reschedule. <laughs> uh, so, and that's the thing is with Monster Mania, they do it like two to three times a year. Yes, they do. Um, so hence why they're on like, Comic Con 40, you know, Monster Mania 45. They haven't been doing it for 45 years. Right. Uh, like some other ones. Uh, so that one's be, been rescheduled due to, to everything um, to the middle of August. So that was actually supposed to be going on this weekend. Um, then the Delaware train show and the April Fool show, that one su was supposed to be... I didn't have that one queued oh, up. no problem. That was supposed to be um, later on, and that was supposed to be the, the end of the uh, the end of March. Right. Well, that one has now gotten pro postponed because that was... Uh, that's held in Delaware, and obviously the governor of Delaware... It's funny, in their little statement, they're like, the governor has shut us down. You know, it's Well, like, in all fairness, <laughs> the governor of Delaware traditionally, you know, shuts down, you know, when the wind blows too hard. So. Right, right. But, you know, basically uh, the show has been postponed to a later date to be worked out. You know, please give us some time. Um, you know, all the advertising is a loss. There was no insurance coverage for where, fear. Where, where. At least with you're all not this infected fear. and dying. Right, exactly. Like, this was kind of like... Really? Like, it almost makes me not want to even go to them again just yeah. because of, you know, like, dude, whatever. Um, you know, as of right now, they still have October 3rd and 4th dates. So, again, is it something that they'll do something earlier? We don't know. Um, then the Greater uh, Philadelphia Comic Con, which was supposed to be uh, the first weekend uh, or the second weekend in April... I happened to look today to see if they were still going to be doing theirs. And they obviously had this announcement saying that, you know, as you're aware, on Thursday, Governor Wolf issued an order directing all Montgomery County schools, public spaces, gathering spaces to be closed for two weeks across the state. He also encouraged the cancellation or postponement of any large gatherings. Obviously, Philadelphia Comic Con is a big gathering, and it's held in Montgomery County. Um, so they basically decided, you know, the safe and healthy of you know, the safe and health of all their attendees and exhibitors and staff. They don't want to risk anything, so they've actually postponed it to be Labor Day weekend. So that will be September fourth through sixth, and that's the one that's held at um, the Expo Center in. Um, in Oops. Oaks. Um, 
And they talked about, like, if you already had your tickets, um, you didn't have to exchange your tickets. Basically, they you're, even though the tickets would have the wrong date, it'll still be fine. Um, if you don't use the tickets, then they'll actually be good for next April. Mm. And I guess if you do want to get a refund, if you did buy tickets, then, you know, you can contact so them. So what is going on so far? <laughs> So, aware. as we know, um, <clears throat> basically anything the end of April and, and on so far, um, <clears throat> excuse me, so um, the uh, Ren Fair that's held at Smithville, that as of right now is still going on. That's uh, April 25th and 26th. It's a free event as far as I know. Uh, they don't have their calendar of events. It's basically held from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And they do little events throughout the whole area of, of Smithville. Um, I'm guessing as it gets closer, they'll either decide to postpone it or they'll actually come out with their, their calendar of events. Um, and then the Philadelphia Ren Fair, which is held <clears throat> two weekends uh, in May, May 2nd and 3rd and 9th and 10th, which is located on Fort Mifflin, that, as of right now, is is still a go, you know, as well. So I think it's kind of a, you know, you just got to wait and see, you know, when things, um, you know, get rescheduled, you know, because a, a lot of the, the conventions we're seeing, you know, a good portion of them are trying to reschedule and some of them are just canceling, you know, completely for the year. Right. So, so, yeah. Well, uh, thank you for the updates. Sure. Uh, kind of stinks, but, you yeah. know, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. So, you know, if you have Netflix... Catch up on, Use it. you know, here, here's your, your chance to, um, you know, to, to catch up on things you haven't, you know, if there's that art project you've been meaning to do, um, you know, that closet you've been meaning to clean out. Here's well, a and, and <coughs> I will plug, uh, uh, next week we'll be doing a talents, mm -hmm. uh, centric show on insights into teens. Uh, we'll be showing, showcasing some of Maddie's stuff mm -hmm. and, and giving some suggestions on what you can do when you are around the house and you don't, yeah. you can't yeah, get out of the house. Yeah, this is a, so. you know, a perfect opportunity. You know, it, it's that spring cleaning time of year too. Yep. Um, you know, obviously everybody's talking about, you know, social distancing, um, you know, so. So for antisocial people like so me, if it's you a are wonderful an, time. If you are an introvert, this is You've been training all your life for this. <laughs> um, but it's also, you know, so on the flip side of it, yeah, you don't want to have the physical contact, you know, d just being safe. But in this day and age, you can still be in contact with people. See, and it's times like this that I'm glad that my gaming community is an online gaming community because right. it doesn't disrupt us at all. Right, exactly. So you guys can still play. So, you know, as a, as a PSA, reach out to your friends, you know, text them. Don't touch them, though. Don't touch them. Text them. You know, if you both have Skype, have a Skype tea, you know. Get Skype both, tea. You know, make, make some Is tea. Is that like an iced tea but with Skype instead of ice? <laughs> Get together with you know with some friends and, and you know and 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 you know have have virtual dates or whatever and and just kind of hang out and and ride this out and we'll all get through it. Amen to that. So before we go, we do have to tell people how to talk back to us. Don't um, come over. Don't, don't, don't come just over. stop by. Everything we give you is coronavirus safe. <laughs> right, okay? exactly. We disinfect and everything. So we do stream on Twitch. We're streaming live now, but we do stream uh, five days, six days a week. Mm, whatever yeah, you do. Usually six days. We'll say six. Sure. I think six. the only day we don't stream is, is Sunday. Oh, that's nice. We Unless rest. we're late and we do. <laughs> right. And we're, right. Anyway, anyway, you can get us streaming on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. Our email is comments at insights into things.com. You can hit us on the Twitter at insights underscore things. <laughs> on YouTube at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Or the interwebs <laughs> at <laughs> www.insightsintothings.com or the rss what's that's our audio podcast oh the audio version uh is uh podcast.insights 
into entertainment.com. Yeah. Give that, yeah, yeah, that's good enough. I usually read that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, we're, we're thrown off. <laughs> uh, you can also catch us on Facebook at facebook.com slash book of faces into things podcast. Then, obviously, we have two other podcasts as well. Uh, the one with our daughter Madison and yourself is Insights into Teens. Are you asking me or are you telling me? I'm telling you. <laughs> you didn't seem so sure. Maybe. And then obviously the podcast that you and Sam, uh, your son, do is Insights into Tomorrow. Yes. Uh, I think that's it. We I think are that's it. done. So go wash your hands. Often, often early and often. Early and often. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. <laughs> and just stay safe, guys. All right. We are out of here. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.